Hello everybody, it's Uncle Matt, and I'm here to read you another bedtime story. But first, happy American Thanksgiving. Yes, happy Thanksgiving to all my American family and friends. And to celebrate, we're going to read a story, The Bernstein Bears Thanksgiving, by Stan and Jan Bernstein. It says here, Dear Big Paw, you are invited to share our Thanksgiving dinner. Love the Bear family. RSVP. This book was copyright in 1997. It's round the next bend. Down a sunny dirt road, just ask the next squirrel, caterpillar, or toad for the treehouse home of the bear family, where Ma, Pa, and the cubs are cozy and warm in their split-level tree. Just at the moment, inside their quaint home, they're reading the harvest honeycomb. Honeycomb dribble, honeycomb drip. What lies ahead? A handsome stranger? Money? A trip? Grizzly growl, grizzly grum, warn us of any danger to come. Then, Mama blew hard. Loose flower flew. Who caught the flower? Papa, that's who. But Mama and Papa both had turned white. Pa from the flower, Mama from fright. The sign in the pan stuck to the honey was no handsome stranger, no trip, no money, but a bone chilling warning of danger ahead, the frightening footprint of a giant, great giant's tread. Hmm. Big paw, breathed Mama. Good grief and alas, the Thanksgiving legend is coming to pass. Legend, asked sister. What legend is that? It says when the bears of bear country grow greedy and fat and fail to share nature's great bounty, that monster of monsters, Big Paw, will come and gobble up bear country, county by county. Nonsense, mocked Papa. Nonsense and stuff. Nonsensical piffle. Pure, pure bear country guff. But Papa Bear couldn't have been more wrong. The Thanksgiving legend was coming on strong. Not more than 10 or 12 miles away, at the very moment of that very day, in a dark, murky forest, the ground was shaking. From crane fly to croc, swamp creatures were quaking. Something was coming, the creatures were frantic. Something enormous, something gigantic. It was Big Paw, of course. He was bigger by far than Paul Bunyan's horse, with shoulders like boulders, ditto his knees, with paws big as dumpsters and arms thick as trees. Out of the forest, he came and he went each footfall leaving a monster-sized dent. But Papa just scoffed and puffed out his chest. Just forget about monsters and all of the rest, because, my dears, I beg to suggest, when it comes to holidays, your Papa knows best. I'm a bear for holidays. I like them all. Whether it's winter, spring, summer, or fall. And your pa has perfect holiday habits. On Easter, I always make way for rabbits and say a small poem for spring and rebirth. On Earth Day, of course, I cherish the earth. 
on Christmas Day I think of others, fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers. On Arbor Day I talk to the trees. Hello, tree. But Thanksgiving's the best holiday, if you please. The one that for me is really the winner. Why? Thanksgiving dinner. Yes, it was almost time for the Bears' Thanksgiving, the day they gave thanks for their standard of living. And what a standard it was, from hollow to hill, from Glenock to Glade, the Bears of Bear Country had it made. Except for the legend, the legend that said if the Bears of Bear Country were selfish and greedy and insufficiently kind to the needy, giving them no more than a tail or a wing, the big paw would come and do his thing. We'll have pickles and olives, marshmallow yams, two kinds of pie, jellies and jams, seven grain bread, turkey, of course, and also radishes, both red and horse, Corn on the cob, dripping with butter, so yummily, yummily, so utterly utter. So as you can see in Papa Bear's case, all Thanksgiving meant was feeding his face. And I almost forgot, no ifs, ands, or buts, my favorite treat? We know, Papa. Mixed nuts. So they went to a place that only they knew, the mixed nut forest where the mixed nut trees grew. As the cubs picked almonds and walnuts, pistachios too, which Papa Bear claimed as his Thanksgiving due, the entire forest started to lurch. The cubs fell like stones from their top, top lofty perch, but they landed not with a bone jarring bump, they landed instead with a comfortable wump. For you see, the cubs had been caught in mid-air in the dumpster-sized paw of a monster-sized bear. It was Big Paw, of course. The monster had come. Talk about scared, the normally talkative cubs were struck dumb. Suffice to say, something surprisingly happened that day. With a bit of a smile and nary a sound, he gently placed them down on the ground. What a shock, what a surprise. For despite his manner and imposing size, Big Paw was nice, gentle and shy, a friendly, helpful sort of guy. Those cubs knew what they had to do, tell that only part of the legend was true. Though he was powerful, fearsome and tall, the monster called Big Paw was no monster at all. It was important news, so off they hurried, leaving Big Paw looking a little worried. Little cubs, little cubs, you forgot your mixed nuts. This certainly was true, no ifs, ands, or buts. When the cubs told Papa their Big Paw tale, his eyes opened wide, his face grew pale. Pa didn't hear the positive part. All he heard was Big Pa. The name struck terror in Papa Bear's heart. Just hold on, said Mama. Whether or not the legend is true, you must welcome the stranger. It's the right thing to do. But ignoring the news that Big Paw was nice and paying no attention and no heed to Mama's advice, Papa Bear called up the Bear National Guard. They would deal with the stranger, they would deal with him hard. Yawn! Meanwhile, Big Paw had climbed to a high mountain ledge. He stretched and he yawned and he looked over the edge. Roar! 
as Big Paw Yawns rolled into the valley through a mountain pass known as Echo Alley. They grew from a rumble to an enormous roar and confirmed the bear's fears about Thanksgiving monster of legend and lore. Alas, Mama's protest fell on deaf ears. The bears of bear country gave in to their fears. Mama's advice notwithstanding, they put the cart of fear before the horse of understanding. To arms, cried Papa. There's no time to fuss. We've got to get him before he gets us. Swords were unsheathed. Buckles, bugles were born or blown. They were no longer bears with minds of their own. They were no longer Jack and Jill, Betty and Bob. The bears had become a dangerous mob. With the false courage of numbers, to the mountain they went, with an arsenal of weapons and deadly intent. While up on the mountain, the cause of a flap was settling down for a bit of a nap. When he heard a strange sound, it was still far away and not very loud. Of course, what it was, was the roar of a crowd. Now, Big Paw was certainly no mental wizard, but he was getting a feeling down deep in his gizzard that trouble was coming. So he scratched his head and started his fuzzy old noodle a-humming, and using his powerful arms and shoulders, he built a tower, a tower of boulders. If those bears were to charge up out of the valley, they'd be just like pins in a bowling alley. But those bears kept on coming faster and faster. There was simply no way to avoid disaster. But then, at the very last instant, before the rocks fell, there came through the din a cub's high-pitched yell, Wait! It was Sister. Wait, sister cried. The rock tower teetered. It started to slide. Brother and sister, small and defiant, had positioned themselves in defense of the giant. But brother and sister were in terrible danger, and there was no one to help them except for the giant. With the bears looking on in amazement and shock, Big Paw held back that tower of rock. And with great strength of his mighty right arm, he protected small brother and sister from harm. Big Paw's our friend. He's very nice. He saved us once. Now he's rescued us twice. Weapons and hats filled the air, plus thankful shouts from every bear. There was joy in the valley on that fateful day. The bears welcomed the stranger. Yes, they had a debt to repay. But it was more than that. At Thanksgiving dinner the very next day, host Papa Bear had this to say, Friends, we are thankful that we've learned to share our bounty with our fellow bear. Excuse me, please, if you don't mind. Here is something you left behind. Look, Papa, your favorite treat, mixed nuts. Yes, friends, it was quite a Thanksgiving. No ifs, ands, or buts. And that's all the time we have for Uncle Matt's bedtime story. I hope you enjoyed that story. And we'll see you next time. And again, happy Thanksgiving to my American friends and family. Bye for now.